Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Capes Lunatics. I am Phil. Lilith may be along here in a little bit, but returning once again to share the little time she has of free, it is, uh, yes, yeah, the writer of the day. Yes, Erica Schultz. Hello. Hello. I, I figured I would put you in front of the Daredevil wall. Oh, oh, nice. Since we're talking Daredevil, and I have my Daredevil t-shirt on. And, and I have my sigh, by the way. So. Oh, wow. These are legit. These, these are legit sigh. That looks real, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, they, um, they're legit. Is that, is that inspiration? Do you keep them, like, on um, while you're writing? Not really. Um, I, I keep them in their case because, because I'm afraid I'm going to, like, drop them. Uh, my best friend's husband is a martial arts instructor, so he's he's taught me the basics. He wants to teach me more, and I'm afraid. Uh, so he so I'm keep being like, look, man, I am so busy. Like, you can't come over and beat the hell out of me with a stick again because I'm just so busy. I got to, you know, block the, the bow staff mm -hmm. as it comes up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've only seen him in like movies and stuff, but I mean, is it? I mean, that seems kind of complicated. You gotta like, you know, like twist. Well, okay, it so this is. I will tell you this. All right, so when you're holding it in this grip, reverse mm. grip, when you see the movies, like in the Electra movies, she's holding it like this. Mm -hmm. That is not the right way to hold it, and you're supposed to hold it with your thumb like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not supposed to hold it like this. Because I've learned the hard way that when you hold it like this, the bow staff comes and knocks you on the knuckles. Oh, uh, okay. So you do not hold them like this. But when you're doing like a movie and you want to flip them and look cool, you hold them like that. So what I did was I shot a little video in my basement and I sent it to, um, to Mike Dowling, who is the artist on... Uh, on Electra, on Daredevil, Woman Without Fear. And I said, these are the thing, this is the way that you were supposed to hold the sigh, et cetera, et cetera. And um, there is one, there's one image where she's holding the sigh like this. She's holding it properly like this, mm -hmm. but her forearm is covering it. So you just see the handle. And the editor said something like, you know, that looks boring. And he's like, but that's the proper way to hold it. <laughs> And, 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 you know, I mean, editors are like, that's never stopped this before. And, you know, I'm saying like, I'm trying to add some reality to this thing. And, you know, there's, they're supposed to be held a specific way. Ah, oh, but yeah, it's an uphill battle. What can you so, do? so was that kind of like, did you see Deadpool and Wolverine? That, yeah. I haven't, no, I, I have, oh. still haven't seen it yet. No, but oh. I've seen, I've seen the Electra movie. I've seen okay. the Daredevil yeah. movie from the early 2000s and I've seen uh uh like posts from uh jennifer garner mm -hmm. and look she trained really hard and god bless her but i mean you'll ask anybody who's a real fighter or who's a real martial artist like when you're talking about like the way it shows on the, the screen versus reality yeah. you know like when uh, there was um i think it was michael j white was doing a video and he's a martial artist and he was saying you know like when you're on screen, you have to telegraph your moves because mm -hmm. you need to tell your stunt double, your scene partner, whatever, I'm going to kick you in the face right now, you know? Yeah. Whereas when you're in a real fight, that's the last thing that you want to do is actually telegraph your moves to your opponent. So that's, that's you know, I get it. It's the rule of cool. I get it in comics. It's just, there's a part of me that's just like, that's not how you hold the damn thing. So, oh, okay. I, no, I was just going to ask you if you were watching De Deadpool and Wolverine and you were just like, oh, happy that, you know, they were getting Elektra's name out there more, but also too, were you, were you just screaming, no, oh, she's holding it wrong. Well, I mean, I was screaming that at my phone, but I mean, my husband also got me these. So now I have these two. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I am just filled with all kinds of, these are plastic though. Thank God. Yeah. Although they are, they are kind of pointy. Like I think if I hit myself hard enough, they would break skin. Cause knowing me, I would be hitting myself with them accidentally. I poke myself in the eye. Um, so yeah. Well, I see, I see two characters you could get, you've written, you could go for Halloween this year. So 
Well, I mean, right before Halloween is New York Comic Con, so I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't think they're gonna let me in with these. Oh yeah, you might have to get the plastic. Yeah. I don't think they're actually gonna let me in with these, um, because and they're not light. I mean, they are. They're probably anywhere from two to three pounds each, mm. which I know is light. But I mean, like, if you literally like conked somebody on the head with them, it would hurt. Mm. It would hurt. But I mean. They're they're not supposed to be children's tools, <laughs> but I mean here that here I am the kid being like oh I got the stabby bits <laughs> I got the stabby things yeah uh, yes but uh, I mean well speaking of Electra yes Daredevil Woman Without Fear number two came out this today today yeah. came out yes but uh, I have to first I had to compliment you on number one. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, you added one of my favorite uh, cannon fodder villains to punch in the face, Crossbones. Thank you. That was much. actually that was actually the uh, the editor wanted somebody oh, really? wanted somebody name. He didn't want us to just you know beat up a, a random goon. He's like, yeah. how about we put Crossbones in? I'm like, Crossbones. All right, fine, whatever. He's like, whatever you want to do. Well, you know, I just just don't make the check late, and I'll write whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's set up that I love the line where he, where he's like, "Lady, I fought Captain America." And she's thinking, "Who hasn't fought Captain America?" Yeah, like everybody's fought Captain. Like that's not a, it's not a flex, dude. He's been it's around a hundred years. Everyone's encountered Captain yeah, America. It's, that's not a flex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I dug deep in the snark with mm -hmm. with this particular version of Electra. Like there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of snark in it. Mm -hmm. And to the point where one of the editors in the lettering draft was like, are we being too mean? I was like, no, we're not. She used to be a, a highly trained. She has, you know, she's killed people. I mean, yeah. I think. It is like it, it genuinely. I know everybody talks about like, who's the mega love of mutant. Who's the, the most dangerous person in the MCU, et cetera. Oh, who has the most snark. Who has the most snark. If you really think about it, when you think about, like take out the whole infinity serum for Natasha, take out, you know, the, you know, hand making Electra quasi immortal, whatever, take that out. You want to talk about just pure kill instinct for someone who is a human, who is unenhanced. You can't beat Electra and Natasha, mm -mm. you know? So if, so Electra as the, 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 the deal she made with Matt was that she can wear the Daredevil costume as long as she doesn't kill. Yes. So this is literally one of the most lethal people in the entire Marvel U. Oh, yeah. And she's pulling her punches. She's pulling her punches because she made that promise to Matt. Mm -hmm. So, of course, she's going to be snarky about it. Oh, yeah. You know, she could have taken Crossbones. Like, she could have just poked him in the neck with these things. These things can poke you in the neck easily. Mm -hmm. She could have taken him out in a heartbeat, but she's playing. She has to play the hero. And he even says that. He's like, oh, look at who's playing hero right now. <laughs> so, I mean, she's going to be snarky because what she really wants to do is just stab him. But she can't. No stabby stabs. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Snark is nothing compared to it. Yeah. It's, it's blowing off steam. It's like, you, you know, you could be dead before you blink, right? Yeah, you would have been dead already if I hadn't made a promise to my kind of ex-husband, if you think about it, because they were married, like she, they were king and queen of the fist. Yes. So kind of ex-husband, kind of not ex-husband, however you want to put it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, no one's going to feel sympathy for Crossbones. He worked for an actual Nazi, so it's it's fine. He's a mercenary. He takes yes. he takes his checks where they come. Yeah, you know? it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the new issue, I I I really enjoy the new Punisher, so I was glad he showed up and she got the Joe Garrison. Yes, yeah, yes. she will. She she will be punishing the Punisher. Oh, nice. Again, because yeah. she's one of the most lethal people in the Marvel universe. So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even just what she does. I mean, I don't know how much I should spoil. Just like what she does with his armor. I'm like, it's that's finesse. I, it's not. Do you know what I loved that because there was in the Falcon Winter Soldier show there was a scene where they were in Zemo's, like his 
yes. know, ancestral home or whatever, but they were in this like really posh, yes. fancy ass place. And Io and a few of the uh, Dora come and they're fighting. And Io is just like, and Bucky's arm falls off. And yes. I was like, I love that. The precision and the confidence and Bucky was looking at her like, why are you just like literally poking at me? And then, so I, I, I had to put something like that in. And Mike Dowling is, I, I can't say enough about Mike and, and Dee Kunif, who, who's the artist, uh, who's the colorist on it. And, and, you know, Mike and I worked together on Hollow's Eve. We did six issues of Hollow's Eve together. We're doing this now. Um, I'm very lucky that we can sort of have shorthand and like, I'll write in it, you know, Mike, I'm going to write this as a spread. If you want to make it a double spread, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Like, I trust you. He's, he's so good, so competent. So he brings like a lot of really cool angles and cool styles to things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, being able to work with, with somebody that you've worked with before helps a lot because you don't have to like break in a new artist. Um, I try very hard to write for the artist that I'm going to be working with. Um, I try to make it um, as accessible to them. Uh, here's an example. So Jada Belviso, who's the artist who is working on Laura Kinney Wolverine with me, um, Jada speaks Italian. So I will throw in some Italian, I speak Italian. So I will throw in some Italian nice. phrases and little things that will help explain like, you know, the, the mood of the scene or things like that. And because I'm trying to write for the artist um, and, and writing for Mike is easy because he knows my style now and I know his style and I know his strengths and vice versa. So, I mean, it's, and, and the same, even with, uh, with blood hunters, which came out a few weeks ago with yes. Robert, Robert Gill, I mean, phenomenal artist. And, you know, we're doing five issues together and, uh, and Robert's already, he, he already has my sense of humor and everything perfectly, perfectly sound. So that's the other thing I was going to, when you brought up, once you brought up Hallow's Eve, I was like, oh, that blood hunter stuff was great. Uh, thank you again. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Yeah. And she's going to be, Hallow's Eve is going to be in this five issue series of blood hunters. Yeah. Yes. There is a new blood hunter that will be introduced in issue number through issue number two. Oh, the opening page of issue number two introduces our new blood hunter. And I, I hinted at it at the women of Marvel panel at San Diego, but I didn't know how much I could say, uh, but if you go to previewsworld.com and you look up the cover for uh, Emma Lupicino's phenomenal covers for blood hunters, if you look up the cover for issue number three, it will show you who the new uh, blood hunter is. I said, she's very short. I was like, she's small and she's short, and that's that's all I can say. So, that's that's your hint. And I mean, the Blood Hunters is enough, but are we going to get anything else, uh, Janine, uh, for the Halloween season? Again, they haven't they haven't asked me. Uh, um, I would love. I mean, I love writing Janine anyway. Yes, because you know, same thing with when I, when I'm writing Daredevil, uh, Electra as Daredevil, because. You know, there's that little edge of villainy mm -hmm. that you get to play with. You know, um, when you're writing somebody like Peter Parker, Spider-Man, or, some, or you know, someone who is so moral and everything, you know, there's, you know, the, the, the fun to that is that when they get a little snarky, it's like a big surprise to everybody. Um, but when you get somebody like Janine, who's got like that, just that, hint of villainy uh it's it's a nice little edge to to work with oh yeah yeah uh the uh wait what was i gonna say here uh but yeah no i was just hoping for it i i love janine i love how what you do with her and again she had one Halloween, but I'm like, man, we need more at Janine. How every year we should have a Janine. You know? I I would love to do that. Nick yes. Lowe, you have my number. You know, um, yeah. I mean, I think the only the only thing I'm doing in the Spidey office right now is uh, is the symbiote stuff. Is the venomous venom? Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. That, I'm kind yes. of doing everything in every office right now. 
that's a, that's a, that's like that's a good way to be. My hands in a lot of pies. Yes, kids. Also, also today, Venom War Venomous number one came yes. out. Yes. Yeah, Lo Fi got, yeah, we got the one the venomous one shot a few weeks ago. Yes, very good. And like we were saying, the Tachim is per, makes perfect sense for a symbiote because it seems like they give symbiotes to a lot of people and the symbiotes kind of drive them here. It's just like this is another weapon for Black Widow. Yeah, it's just it's just another tool, which is why she has to take Sliver aside yes. and really teach her because if you're not aiding, if you are not helping, then you're hindering. Yes. And and Black Widow is all about efficiency. Mm. She's, you know, get in, get out. Um, and when she was when she was going on this mission and there was uh, doubt in the symbiote that then turned things a little awry. Um, and and I think, you know, and it's funny because I'm seeing I'm seeing reviews like you get a symbiote, you get a symbiote, you get a symbiote. Like, yeah, I mean, that's basically what, how I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when I was, you know, organizing my projects, I was like, everyone's a vampire, everyone's a, everyone's a venom, everyone's a symbiote. Um, and like, I was literally like organizing my projects that way. So you go from one crossover of everybody's a vampire to now everybody's a zombie symbiote. Um, so, yeah. So do you have the funnest job in the world? You're like, okay, one day I, I get to write vampires, and next day I get to write, you know, alien symbiotes. Uh... I get to write cyberpunk noir uh, ex soldier. Oh, Rat City know. number five. Look at her kids. See? Yeah. So Again. I'm actually I'm finishing yeah. up number the script for number ten. Right oh, now, so yeah. And we're still rolling after ten, right? Oh God, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Uh, no, yeah. I my bro, yeah, pff, I was told, and then somebody said, "No, this isn't true." And I was like, "Well, I'm. I then it's now a legend. I'm. I'm making it canon." Uh, no, I was told a minimum of thirty. So I'm. I'm going until they fire me. I'm I mean, just gonna keep writing. I'm just gonna I, keep writing until they fire me. I mean, I think the only the only books currently that it had don't get pet thirty and beyond are the ones they announce right away. They're just like, "Oh yeah, this is a four issue series," or that you know, this is a. I mean, this was already, I mean, they said that this was going to be an ongoing anyway. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, my, my first conversation with Todd, um, we did a Zoom call back in 2023. And I said to him, I was like, you know, well, how many issues do you want? And he said, how many issues do you need? And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, you know, most things are, you know, anywhere from four to six issues. Because, you know, that's nice trade paperback. And, um, and he said, uh, okay, you can do it. So you can do it in five. I was like, yeah. And he's like, can you do it in eight? I said, yeah, I can do it in eight. He's like, what about 12? And I'm like, usually people are trying to talk you out of doing maxi series. So at first I was like, okay, so let's do a maxi series at 12. He's like, yeah, but could you go to 24? And I'm like... Is this, is this happening? I think this is happening. Um, so yeah, so I was like, all right, I'm 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 pretty much planned out to work with Jay Carlos uh, and Jay David Ramos, who's the colorist, uh, for issue 30. That last six issues, though, I kind of think we're going to go crazy. No. Oh. Like, like, I have something really crazy and nutty in mind. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm kind of almost scared that they might be like, okay, now we're pumping the brakes. Because they really haven't said no to us. Hmm. I mean, there's very few things that are like, maybe do this, maybe do that. But they've never been like, no. They've never given us a hard no. So I'm like, I've got like a really funky visual in my head. That I would really love to get on the page. And let's see if they, I mean, they might turn around and be like, this is, this is too out there. No. I'm like, all right. Do you think it helps though too that it's it that the deviant's kind of like in his own little universe because it's in the future, so it's like you're that you really don't have to affect any other book or well, it's really funny that you say that because, <laughs> uh -oh. because as I'm writing issue number ten, um I am directly linking it to the six one six of spawn, if you want to call oh. it that. Oh. So there will be a direct link 
Um, I mean, well, there is a direct link. I mean, as yeah. as uh, Al detonates his suit, you know, the shockwave that infects um, Peter's nanites is from the necroplasmic detonation of of Al Simmons. So it, that's the immediate direct link. But yeah. there's going to be a more specific direct link that I'm actually currently writing. Um, I was talking to Thomas Healy about it, and he was like, oh, yeah, you could do this. He goes, well, wait a minute. We've got blah -de blah going on. And if you can find a way to link it to that, I was like, I can totally find a way to link it to blah -de blah. Oh. So, yeah, so there's going to be a, a little link back to something uh, that's going on in five months. Well, well, something that, well, no, something oh, that has something already that happened. Asked. Okay, okay. Something that has already happened in Spawn. Oh, yeah. Probably, I want to say within the first 30 issues of original Spawn. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, so, so you get to do vampires, symbiotes, time travel. Oh, nice. Well, no, nobody's traveling in time. But no, there's, but you're there's kind a of that character that will be, um, that will yeah. be. I'm trying to think how to say it. There's a character that will be influential in the future. Oh. That helps. Okay. Yeah. I think go. that's that's the best way to say it. Damn it. And, and can it. keep my job. No, let's make it. I'm going to go back and read the first 30 issues. Okay. Oh. I actually literally what's propped. My laptop is propped up on right now is compendiums one and two. <laughs> I have them propped up because um, because I've been rereading. You know, I, I used to have a bunch of the singles and, you know, everybody gets rid of their collection when they, you know, become adults. Uh, well, not everybody. Um, but uh, I went and I got the compendiums because it's just great. You just have a giant brick of a book that you can kill somebody with. I, I come home from the comic shop and I had two compendiums in a bag and I was literally worried that my bag was going to tear. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they're so heavy. And I dropped it on the couch and my husband's like, what do you have in that bag? And I was like, pulling out these giant tomes. And I was like, we could kill someone with these, you know? Um, yeah, the giant bricks of books. But yeah, we, we've got one, two, and three, and I have four and five on order. Oh, nice. Um, they're thick. They make, they're, they're basically their own uh, bookends mm -hmm. <laughs> when you put them on the shelf. Well, that's what I say to every writer. I'm just like, you, again, you got the greatest job because you know you're reading comics, you're buying comics, and then you get your significant other says anything, you're like, this is how I get paid. Yeah, exactly. This is work. I will say this. I mean, like, I was, I, I was looking. I was, I follow a couple of tarot readers on Instagram, and one of them was doing, um, was doing a reading, and it just, it very much spoke to me, and. You know, she was saying, like, you need an attitude of gratitude and things like that. Like, you have an embarrassment of riches right now. And I was like, you know, you are absolutely right. I do. Um, so when I turn around, I'm like, oh, my God, I had to read, like, 12 comics today just to get ahead, like, just to understand the voice of this character that then I have to write. I mean, it's like, really? Really? This oh, your life's so really? hard, Erica. Oh. Really? <laughs> You know, so so there are there are days when when I do believe my own hype, and I'm just like, oh god, this job is so difficult. And then there are other days that are like, you're the biggest idiot. You're literally getting paid to write comics. Shut up. Quit your quit your bitching. Uh, so yeah, you're literally getting paid to be the voice of Elektra and Black Widow. And Hollow's Eve, yes. and Elsa Bloodstone, yeah. and White Lord Rail, Kenny. Yeah. and uh, Laura Kinney. Well, this is going to be my second round on Laura Kinney. Yes, side. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, well, I mean, basically, this is your second round on Electra too. I mean, it is. That is that is true. It is my second round on Electra because of uh, Gang War, which was yes. phenomenal. Artist Sergio Devia. Um, I actually splurged and I bought one of the um, one of the spreads. From Ooh. from uh, Gang War Number One, and uh, it's beautiful. I just I I need more wall space now. This is my this is the thing. I need more wall space. I've got my my Liana Kangas Electra yes. as Daredevil. I've got my uh, Marcio Takara when I first wrote Daredevil back in 2018. 
So I've got all the um, all the variants. I've got up top. I've got my 181. Oh. I got an original. I splurged and got an original copy of 181. Um, and then I have the uh, the beautiful uh, spread from Sergio. Um, and I even have. I do have some Laura stuff. So I've got. Ooh. I've got two prints. The one on top is from uh, Kalman Androvsky, who did the covers for the X23 run. And then the one below is, um, it's a great print from Paolo Rivera. Oh, it's, wow. of, uh, it's of Daphne Keene playing uh, X23. Oh, nice. And then on the side, I've got two original pages from uh, the artist on uh, X20, the X23 story that we did, uh, Edgar Salazar. So. Hmm. Nice. Yes. I was gonna say they're too they're too much fun to play with, but you could hang you should hang those size up by that let those electra. Um, I could, but honestly, like I would want to get like hooks. Oh yeah, to yeah. actually hold them because I wouldn't want to just sort of like put a nail here and a nail here and just sort of stick them on the wall. Yeah, I yeah. would definitely put them in a, in a stud. Yes, like, yeah. definitely they definitely go in a stud. Um, because you do not. <laughs> I don't want to be sitting on the couch here, and then. <laughs> Watching TV and then literally something falls and conks me on the head. Oh. Could you imagine? Could you imagine explaining that to my health insurance? Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> or it's your husband and you're just like, oh yeah, no, I didn't I didn't hit him with it. No, it just fell off the wall, I swear. He likes to nap on this couch, knowing it would just oh, like, no. fall and just like stab oh. him in the chest. No. 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 Wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be good. But yes, you do have an embarrassment of riches. Just today. Look, it's just, just today. Just today. I know. I know. <laughs> and then next week. Oh. Next week is Phases of the Moon Night. Oh, <gasps> yes. Yes. I did I, I did a pay uh, a, a story in Phases of the Moon Night. Me and Ben Percy have uh we each have a story in that book. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, they, yeah, everyone August super... has been busy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Beats the alternative, I guess. But so. Oh, that is true. That is true. Although I will, I will be honest. I have worked more this year than I've worked in a very long time, and I've pulled more all-nighters this year than I have in a very long time. And, um, I think I've found my like. I was doing seven books a month for a while. And oh I think, my god! And I think I've found my my sweet spot. My sweet spot is like three books a month <laughs> like that would be great so laura kinney's an ongoing rat city is an ongoing and then if i get like a third ongoing or just do a bunch of like minis that's like my sweet spot but doing <laughs> seven books a month i have now learned that is not good <laughs> i mean how were you doing now was it just one day a week with do a different book um, for the most part, yeah. What I was doing was I was um, I was trying to stagger them, mm. so I could focus one day on this and then another day on that, you know. And then this way, my characters weren't getting you know too jumbled yeah. up. Um, and with the Marvel editors, I would get one editor emailing me and saying, you know, I need X, Y, and Z. And I said, well, then you now have to fight with this editor because this editor wants it now. So <laughs> You all get in a conference room, and whoever comes out alive gets my attention. Was it, you know, was because it, was I was it, dealing with literally like seven different editors. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had the Moon Knight editor, the Daredevil editor. I, I did the, I did Moon Knight, Daredevil. I'm doing a story in – they already announced it, so it's, it's not news. A story in uh, Spider-Man, Black Suit and Blood. Yes. Uh, I had – the two elect. I was writing Electra, um, a woman without fear. Right after I had fi just finished Gang War, we immediately oh. started running on that. So I was, you know, going straight through into that. I was working on Blood Hunters. I've I've done a lot of things, and I'm very <laughs> tired. And I'm very tired now. Yeah, I think we've talked about your schedule before, but like, yeah. what are you doing? Three books or seven books? Like, like you were saying, keeping the characters straight in your head. So. Yes. Like, 
on one day, do you, do you just focus on one character or can you do more than one book a day? I try and focus on, well, I, I try, if I'm doing more than one book a day, I try it be, I try to have it as different uh, stages. So if I'm working on just, uh, if I'm working on Daredevil, um, I would like to be in the outline phase of Daredevil if I'm working on the script phase of Wolverine. Mm. So I like being in different phases because if I'm scripting everything all at once, then that's when things start to get confusing because I'll throw out a dialogue line and my brain will be like, oh, that's great for Electra," but I'm not really thinking about Electra. I'm thinking about Elsa Bloodstone, you know, um, for Blood Hunters. So I'm trying, I try and keep things in, in different stages um, so I can sort of separate it. Um, and, and, and I will say that there is going to be some overlap in the sense that I, I wrote a, a scene taking place at a gas station in two different books. <laughs> <laughs> because I could use the same reference. I could just like put it in a new Dropbox folder for the other artist. But, but two very, very different things happen. Mm -hmm. But they just happen to both be in a gas station. Uh, and like a, like a gas station mini mark kind of thing. Um, so I realized that after I finished writing, I was like, ah, nobody will notice. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I mean, do you, do you notice that a lot? Do you try to watch that where it's just like, well, one story may kind yeah. of influence another story you're doing. I, I try because, well, I try and have a through line for each, mm -hmm. for each story. Um, and I try to stay true to that. Um, and I try to make each through line be very unique and specific to that character, to that story. So um, I, I, once I'm, I'm sort of down that road, I'm, I guess I'm okay. Maybe. Who knows? Is, is this all a dream? Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But I mean, I, I will say this. I, you know, going on an embarrassment of riches, the, the artists that I've worked with, you know, Sergio Davia, Sean Parsons, and Cece Dela Cruz on Gang War. You know, Mike Dowling and De Knif on uh, Woman Without Fear. Luciano Vecchio and Rochelle Rosenberg on Venomous. Yes. Um, Jay Carlos and J. David Ramos on Rat City. Uh, I mean, it's just like <sighs> head yeah. exploding. From, oh, from yeah. the amazingness, you know, and I and Edgar, you know, going back to last year, Edgar Salazar uh, on both Moon Knight, uh, uh, What If, and X twenty three, the five issue X twenty three. So you okay. know, I've been I've been super lucky, and Jado Belvizo on um, on Wolverine is she's phenomenal. Um, I did request that you know my editorial team on Wolverine is is all male and i said look we're we're writing a 21 year old young woman in new york city i've been that 21 year old young woman trying to find your way um and i i really would like either a i would like to cast the creative team as all female or non binary creators because we, i think there is a if this is Laura from a woman's perspective, then I think the creative team needs to reflect that. Mm. Um, and I didn't get pushback, but the question was, is this a, is this a deal breaker? Mm. I said, I'm not Bendis. Like I can't, <laughs> I'm not Hickman. I can't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have deal breakers. Yeah. You know? Um, so I said, you know, it's not an edict. It is a, strong request mm -hmm. is the best way I can. And, you know, I mean, I, I, it, I didn't just say that, go be, go forth, find me women. You know, I didn't say that. Like I said, like, here's a list of artists that I've either worked with or I've wanted to work with. Um, here's a list of uh, colorists that I've worked with that I've wanted to work with. Here's a list of cover artists, you know, and I, and I sent, you know, portfolio links and I, and I reached out to friends and said, Hey, you know, we're casting for this book, you know, send me a couple of pieces, send me your latest portfolio stuff, you know, whatever me stuff, please. And I would send links and then 
you know, they'd come back with like, oh, this person's booked or that person, whatever. Um, but I mean, it's nice to be able to say that they took the suggestion that they, yeah. that they, they followed my lead on that. And, and I'm really excited. And the people that we were working with are, they're really just, just so talented and bringing, bringing something new and fresh to the, to the material and, and just, and I've said it 900 times on every podcast. And I know people are like, we're sick of the sandwich, you know, analogy, but I'm hungry always. Um, so, I mean, it's like you start with a good script and a good team and you just keep building and building. And, and that's one of the phenomenal things about comics is, is this, you know, ultra collaborative process. Um, and I really love it. And I love working with amazing people. And I've been very, very lucky to work with amazing people. I mean, I, I th that that love comes across because, again, you can't write the stories you write if you don't like love these characters, love who you're working with. Yeah. You can tell when a team, you know, meshes like so, so well. I mean, but sometimes when I mean, the creative team should mess, mesh, yes, obviously. Yes, mesh, yeah, yeah. But like when the when the story, like the team not meshing. Oh, yeah. Not the and no, stuff, no. Like that's that's the fun part because Got that's it. where the drama lies yeah. and everything, you know, like, you know, um, Elsa Bloodstone wanting to blow Miles face off. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. A spoiler for Bloodhunters number one. Sorry. Yes. And again, a few weeks. and again, you get to play with a vampire Miles Morales. How I mean, yes, that I will say that there's a limitations though because it's funny. So sometimes you get a character and they're like, yeah, you could do pretty much do what you want, and then other times they're like, no, 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 this flagship character yes. has to do X, Y, and Z. So yeah. I'm I am walking a very fine line when it comes to Miles. There's things that I've wanted to do with Miles that I have not, I've been told I can't do, which is a little frustrating because I think it would be really fun for the character to do that. But I mean, Cody, Cody Ziegler has Miles locked down. Mm -hmm. So Cody, yeah. you do your thing. I love your work anyway. So God bless you, Cody. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there's Miles is going to be coming in and out of blood hunters and such. Um, and then, and and we're gonna have this new character who's coming, who I'm like intensely happy about. Like, mm -hmm. I pitched the character and the editor, and originally I pitched this character as like a one-off. And uh, my editor Martin said, he's like, "Why don't we just keep her around?" I was like, "Oh." <gasps> <laughs> So she's staying. She is canon now. Mm. And I am really excited. I mean, I'm probably too excited. It's probably like punch drunk exhaustion. Um, I probably shouldn't be this excited, but I'm super duper excited. And she comes out next month. And yes, and if you want to spoil it, go look at previews for the, um, the cover for issue number three of Blood Rivers. Oh, nice. Yes, that spoils it. After you took what pains not to spoil it, then they spoiled it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because when we were at um, when we were at San Diego, and I was on the Moment of Marvel panel with um, Gail Simone was there because they were launching Uncanny. Yes, which is just if you haven't read Uncanny yet, oh, I've read it. Have, yes, that's good. you have to read Uncanny. You have to read X Men. You have to read Exceptional X Men. Honestly, the the X books that are coming out now just fantastic oh the best in years yeah fantastic x books i'm very lucky that i'm like an on and like this x-men like email thread so i get to like look at scripts and i guess it just good stuff good stuff all around um so i had i looked at the uh at the woman who was moderating devon and i was like can i say and she's like i don't know can I, can I, can I break the news? She's like, I, I don't know. I was like, Oh, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, uh, okay. I can just tell you that she's really short. And then everybody gets on their phone. I was like, no, 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 but it's a new character. She's, she's short, but she's a new character. So she can't like go to Marvel wiki and find her. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's a brand new character. Brandy new. Oh. Brandy new. Are you on Previews World right now? 
Uh, I've been looking for it. I can't find it. I'm like, where is this? Where is it? <laughs> I'll put it in the chat. Let me find it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat. Wait, so um, you're, so you're saying this character is like a, a like a brand new creation of yours, or? Yes. Oh, okay. Robert Gill and I have created a new character. So besides the look, then how can you spoil it then? Because. Well, I've said. Uh, I, I have said she's very short. Oh, okay. I that is basically what I said. I said she's very short, and that's the most that I can give. But then you know, there's the, but then the cover is in previews. So. Uh, okay. 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 Yes. Oh. You see the cover. You see the yes, cover. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, you, so she is very short. She yes. Very short. Oh, yes. very short. Yes. yes. So. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm more than. I'm more than excited. Of. It. I'm probably too excited about her. I'm more excited about her than like any other character. <laughs> Which is probably. I want the I mean, name. I want the name because I'm sure the name's going to be very good. Her name is Maggie. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, my friend Andy Sawyers, who is uh, an artist in London. He's also a cop in London, but he's also an artist. Um, and he and I were chatting, and uh, he was asking about my old cats. And he's like, how are the old Moggies? And I was like, what the hell is that? And he's like, oh, it's, it's you know, British slang for a cat. And I was oh. like, oh, that's a cool name. So. If you just listened carefully, I just literally gave it away. Yes, yes, yes. You know, who's listening? Not yet, but they anyway, people might. Uh, maybe. maybe. So, um, so is so issue two. So is that going to be the origin for for? Yes. Okay. We 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 get well. We sort of get an origin story. We get an origin story as to where she is now. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, and she's got. Yeah, she's she's amazing, and Robert Gill is so phenomenal um he really he's yeah there's so much fun stuff in this and there's a lot of stuff in the background because it's an ensemble book mm -hmm. and there's so much going on and you've got these four strong women and miles morales fighting vampires and doing all this crazy stuff there are these little things that robert will stick in the background that you don't notice until you zoom into the page and you're like, do you have so-and-so like flying up somebody's nose? Like, <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Like, and he's, you know, but like, I get it. He's got to have fun with it too. So yeah, I, I, Robert Gill's been fantastic and I'm really excited to work with him. This is my first time I've been working with him and he had just come off, uh, I think, X-Force mm -hmm. and then started this with me. And I was just like, Hey, I know you just did X Force. People cutting people up. Well, now they're going to be punching people a lot. So, punchy, punchy. Got to have the punchy, punchy in the superhero comics. I said one of the hardest comic jobs is probably like writing a team book, especially if like members have like their own books. Like it's again, it's like again you, you again Miles is a what well you know like a big character and has his own book, and so it's like you really can't alter him too much, uh, or you know. Yeah, there's. I mean. There's definitely a fine line that you have to walk um, in terms of what I, my biggest thing though, is that what I try very, very hard, especially if it's a, a well-established character is to get their voice. Mm. Um, so I read like a whole ton of Cody Ziegler miles. I read Saladin Ahmed's miles. Um, and when they were writing uh, the character and I just wanted to get the cadence of the voice. I wanted to get the, like, what does he say? And there's, and, and there's, there's a phrase that I always say, because I know some people feel uncomfortable when you say, hey, guys, you know, to a general group. So I always say, hey, party people. Mm. And so Miles says, hey, party people. And all of my friends who really know me are just like, oh, my God. Would Miles <laughs> actually say that? I'm like, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> the editors did not flag it. The editors did not flag party people, so... Well, again, too, would a teenage boy say to a bunch of grown women, hey, hey, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I I got away with that, which was fun. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's... You, you want to... Everybody wants to put their own spin on a character, and that's, you know, that's just 
human nature. Like we want, you know, you're given this creative job. You want to add a little something extra. Um, but you have to balance it with what Cody's doing in what Jed was doing in blood hunters, what Cody yes. is doing in miles, uh, main book. Um, there's spectacular spider men, um, with Peter and miles. So yeah. you kind of have to balance out and make sure that you're not stepping on anybody's toes. Um, and I think now that I've worked on now three crossovers, um, I'm getting good at like, you know, gumbying my way through the little, uh, you know, the, you know, weaving my way in and out of stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that I've, you know, I'm not getting cocky and that I really do know what I'm talking about, or I could be completely wrong. Again, no. it's going to all just be a dream. I mean, if you weren't doing a good job, I don't think they'd be uh, giving you the embarrassment. Knocking on <laughs> all the wood. Yes. Knocking yes. on wood. Yes. I don't want an email. I don't want to wake up to an email telling from Tom Brevoort telling me I'm fired or from, <laughs> or from Todd McFarlane telling me I'm fired. That I would mean, suck. I think you have job security. I mean, they'd have to hire like three people to replace you. So Knocking on all the wood. <laughs> yeah. I... I'm kind of indispensable right now, but I don't know if that's a good thing. Because then you get an editor being like, oh, yeah, can you give me, a t on a Monday, can you give me a 25-page uh, full script by Thursday? It's like, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, next yeah, Thursday? Talk to, talk to that other person uh, to see if yeah, they can exactly. move exactly. back out. Yeah. Exactly. Tell that editor to move, to move his uh, scripts back. I mean, that's the other thing that was like, I... I could be four weeks ahead and I still feel like I'm behind, mm. you know? Um, and I, and I will say this, uh, Jay Carlos on rat city, he is fast with the artwork. Mm. Um, and I always try and be two full scripts ahead. So he's already halfway through issue number eight. Wow. And I haven't finished the script for I haven't finished a final draft of issue 10. And I'm like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, I have to do that. And then I just finished lettering issue seven because I'm also doing the lettering. I just finished lettering issue seven tonight. So, yeah. Yeah, I got to I do a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, again, job security. <laughs> no, it's be, genuinely I think it's because I'm a I'm a control freak um, because yeah. I try and because comics is a huge collaborative process. And so everybody's adding their little two cents and I want to add a nickel. And so I'm like, well, I'll letter it too. Just to add my little extra, you know. Oh yeah, I get the whole that. control freak thing. Cause you're probably just like, they offer you one of your favorite characters. Like, yeah, 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 don't let anybody touch that. Yeah, I want to write that. Then they offer something else. Yeah, oh yeah, I love her too. Yeah, give me that book, give me that book. Yeah, like, yeah. Give me all the books. And then yeah. I'm like, why do I not sleep? <laughs> Why am I literally waking up in the middle of the night, rolling over and scribbling in a notebook, um, you know, ideas? Oh, no. Is it coming to you in dreams now? It doesn't come to you in dreams. But I mean, and this is not a new theory, but there's this theory that when you like when you're literally like just about to fall into like REM one mm. when it comes to sleep, apparently that moment is when sort of your mind really opens up and all of the problem solving mm. um really gets done and so if you like especially if i'm um having trouble with a story idea uh how to get from a to b you know i'll, I'll you know type a billion things out I'll, I'll hand write stuff out and you know just like free write just to sort of get out of my system and none of it's working, none of it's working. And then I'm like, I'm lying in bed, I'm about to fall asleep, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I got the idea. So I have to roll over and then scribble it in the dark, you know, quickly. And then the next morning, I pray that it's legible enough uh, to be able to, you know, figure out what it is that my brain finally opened up enough to be able to, you know. I mean, it's because like, that's that's the thing, is like when you concentrate on something too much, a lot of times you're just you're you're missing it. Yeah, it's like that early Seinfeld episode when he woke up and wrote something. Then the next morning, he's like, "What does it say? I can't read this." What is? I I've gotten pretty good at at writing in the dark. I have. Hmm. I, I've gotten pretty good at it, and um, I I I used to be try and be like very neat, like right within the lines. No, I know I'm not going to do that, but I also have gotten to the point where I'm not writing the same line over and over. Like I know to, you know 
pull the yeah. line down when I write. This way it's not four sentences literally on top of each other, which is always fun. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard a, th a theory that's like, yeah, when you were like, when, when your body kind of relaxes, yeah, the mind opens up. And that's why so many people get ideas like when they're in the, when they're taking a shower or something, yeah. it's just like, oh yeah. If I, if I'm super duper blocked and I really don't know what I'm going to do, um, taking a shower helps. I know people say go for a walk, but I get really distracted when I go for a walk because I have this tendency to make up stories about stuff. So I see like, I mean, we've lived in this house for almost six years and I still only know like three of my neighbors. Um, and well, probably because the rest are probably jerks, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, but like, so there's a, there's a little girl who lives at the end of my block and she is precocious for lack of a better term. And she lives three houses down from me and she's no joke. She's probably only six, but I don't know how she like slips out but she, I'm hearing her screaming in front of my house and her oh, parents geez. are in the yard looking for her. And I'm like, she's right here. Oh, and she's just like, shh. So my brain, I don't know anything about this girl other than she likes to run around. And so my brain will make up a story about her if I'm walking, like if I'm going for a walk in the, in the uh, neighborhood or if, you know, somebody's cooking something and I smell somebody's cooking, I'll, I'll, you know, ponder about who they are kind of thing. So, so going for a walk is distracting to me, but taking a shower is not because you know exactly what you need to do. You got to go, you got to wash your body, you got to wash your hair and everything. So I have a routine in the shower. So I, I do the routine and because it's, you know, on autopilot, then that allows my brain to sort of open up and say, oh, hey, you can do X, Y, and Z. Um, and then I'm sitting there going, I hope I, and I have to repeat it to myself over and over so I, I remember it because other, there's no place to write it in the shower. Um, although a friend of mine said that there are these like crayons, like kids' crayons that you can like uh, write on the walls and everything, um, and then they wash off. So I was kind of thinking of getting some of those. So if I'm in the shower and I come up with an idea, I can write on the walls and then like it, you know, transcribe it to the notebook when i'm dry and then rinse it off i don't know how good they are but they do have like a like waterproof pouches you can put your phone in if you ever like put notes on your phone or something i i don't i mean that is that is an option i'm not poo-pooing that option you don't have to worry about handwriting i don't have to worry about hair and handwriting my only fear is knowing my luck I, there will be a hole in it or I didn't yes. seal it properly. Yeah. And then like, I go, I get out of the shower and I just have a bag of water and a phone. And then it's like, drop the phone in rice, which somebody said doesn't even work, but then other people say it does work. I don't know. I hope I never find out. I hope I never have to find out. No, you sound like me. Cause yeah, anytime someone, yeah, something like that, I'd be like, well, what if water gets in there? Well, you know, this is... Oh God, I would freak out. These things, these phones are expensive, man. Mm -hmm. I just got a new phone. I just got a new phone right after San Diego Comic-Con. And um, I had had the same phone for like six years and I just got a new phone. And now it's like, got to make sure that everything's perfect. You know, um, because, you know, it's terrifying. Those things are expensive. Oh, yeah. I know people who get new phones every year, and I don't know how they do. Like, you know what? If you're a millionaire, God bless. Give me some money. Yeah. Uh, or better yet, donate to an animal shelter. Uh, but, yeah, uh, phones are expensive. I will, I will keep my phone as long as it keeps working. So... Yeah, I mean, I don't know how people leave them. Lay the only place my phone lays around is at the house. If I'm outside this house, it's in my pocket. I'm just like. My phone is in my pocket, in the cup holder in my car. Yes. You know, in my bra. Um, <laughs> someplace safe. Yes. It is someplace safe. Yeah, because it's, it's terrifying. And, you know, and it's like, oh God, I do scroll so much and I know I shouldn't. But like. You, you, you're on Instagram and you're like going through reels and it's like, you know, did you know that if you keep your phone X, Y, and Z, you're getting radiation in your butt? Yeah. Or yeah. like if you, you know, if, if you have your phone out and, in, in a public place, there's people that can steal all your, your information. And I'm like, oh crap. 
I don't have it. You know, all I literally have on my phone are just like the covers of all my comics. So I can do like quick social media posts mm -hmm. and like cat photos. Like <laughs> I really, I don't have anything like lascivious on my phone. I don't have anything that's like really like, you know, yeah. you know what people could do? They could send my, my photos to JD Vance and say, look, here's a crazy cat, childless cat lady. Like that's, that's the best that they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cause I don't, I don't sure. have like any, I don't have like any like naked pictures or anything on my phone. Well, some, if some you do, God bless you, but no, yeah. not me. Well, some people save like their credit card not numbers on their phone and stuff, you know, so you can just tap the phone in some places and stuff. See, that's that. Like I have my PayPal on my phone, but like I, you have to, you've got to get like a, a text message or it has to email you or something. Yeah. I have like two factor identification, yeah. which obviously I know is not. Yeah. You know, nothing is foolproof. If if somebody really wants to break your break into your stuff, fine. You know what yeah. they'll do? They will break into my account and they will find out how poor I am. They will find out as as wonderful as it is to write to write for comics, they will find out that it does not pay great, which is why I was doing seven books a month. So I, I saw there something. I saw something online the one time that was like, "Why? Why do you have to verify your uh, identity? You know, to pay a bill or something? Or like, if someone's breaking in and wants to pay my bill, let them pay my bill." Oh yeah, yeah. You can totally pay my T-Mobile bill. I'm so happy if you do. <laughs> I'm so happy if you pay my T-Mobile bill or my PSENG or whatever. Fill in the blank. They're gonna hack your. <laughs> they're gonna hack your phone. Find out who's uh, who's uh, coming in. Blood Hunters number two. You don't. I know you don't have to. It's online. It's online already. It's already spoiled. But like, I haven't gotten the blessing from the editor to actually say anything. So now I'm terrified. I can't say anything. But it's already there. But the cover's out there. Yeah. I actually suggested that cover. Mm. I said I suggested something like that for the cover, and Emma Lucchino, of course, said, you know, phenomenal job because she's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the cat's already out of the bag. I, I know that you had Rimshot waiting for that. Yes. I know yeah. you did. I know you did. You were like. Been hovering on the button for like, yeah, 50 some minutes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I will let you go. I was like, ah, I'll let her go. I went up to the full hour. We're almost at the full hour. So. I, yeah. I've, you know me. I'm like a wind up toy. Just wind me up and just let me go. And I'll just talk randomly about. Well, again, you're you're stuff. interesting. Again, you're working, always working on 20 projects at once. So, of course, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we've All mentioned, the projects. we mentioned how many you have now that the, the Spider-Man of Moon Knight that's upcoming. Is there anything we didn't mention that you're working on? Um. Well, there's a project that I can't talk uh, about yet that I got last week. Um, I can say that it's a character that I've written before. Mm. I'll say that. Um, and, you know, Wolverine is coming in December. December 11th, I believe, is Wolverine number one, uh, which I'm very excited about. And Jada Belviso, fantastic to work with. And Michelle Rosenberg is going to be coloring it. And again, Rochelle was doing the colors for um, Venomous. Beautiful work. Um, I'm trying to think. Everybody, you have to watch the YouTube video of this because as she's talking about it, the Wolverine book coming out, she's waving them claws around in her hand. <laughs> waving, you know, going by Daredevil. Let me go reverse grip. Going by Daredevil, Woman Without Fear, and Laura Kinney Wolverine. These are the books that you need to buy. There's your social media post. Whatever book you're talking about, you need to hold up a prop. There you go. Well, I don't. I don't have uh, nanotech legs for Rat City. No, no. I can do. I can do Daredevil. I can do Wolverine. These. These are actually. This is my early anniversary present for my husband. So our anniversary is in a in in a week, and this was the early anniversary present. Um, and then uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I can get. I, I can get like a bloodstone attached to my I hand. Know, yeah. Um, get some magic masks. Or like, just like, hey kids, guess what new tattoo I'm getting? <laughs> I do have I do have a comic book tattoo. I have yeah. um the royal symbol from uh, this is the royal mark from uh, Forgotten Home. Oh, nice. Yes, seven people read that book. <laughs> It's a great book. It was like a, a love a love letter for that book. I love that writing that book. And like oh. seven people 
read it. And it was nominated for five Ringo Awards. Nice. So, but yeah, read gonna... Forgotten Home from Dark Horse. All right. Yeah. I was going to say, do you, I didn't know if you had any creator owned books, but I'm like, does she have time to write her own? Oh book? my God. I have so many creator owned books. <laughs> shout shout them you, out. Shout them out. Me? Shout Bylines, them out. Bylines and Blood with Van Jensen and Anike from Aftershock. All these books are on my website, ericashiltzwrites.com. Bylines and Blood. I've got Christabel Volume 1 with uh, Amagoya Aguirre is the artist on it. I have uh, Strange Tales with Claire Connolly. It's like uh, kind of like Rick and Morty meets uh, craziness. Uh, I have M3 with Vicente Alcazar. Uh, it's uh, the first book I ever wrote. It is a um, spy thriller. Uh, I have, what else do I have? I've got The Deadliest Bouquet, which is a book from Image. It's about uh, three sisters, uh, three estranged sisters who come back together when their mother's murdered and they try not to kill each other in the process because they hate each other. Uh, I have got, uh, what else do I have? Yeah, that's at least as, as much as I can think of right now. I have tons of creator-owned work. Tons. Wow. I, I'm a, yeah. I'm just thinking now, I'm like, man, I got to get it. I got to go to the website, check these all out. As go a, to my website. I have plenty of creator-owned work. There's, there's lovely creator-owned work there that, you know, it's, it's the Marvels that the Marvel work that pays for my creator owned work that pays for me to be able to pay artists, you know, sadly be better than some publishers do because uh, artists, everybody deserves to, to eat. Everybody deserves to pay their bills. So I, I pay artists as, as best as I can because, you know, they did, they're doing a hell of a lot of work. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So yes. Yeah. So kids, if you're reading comic books, you are probably going to run into Erica Schultz somewhere. You will. I've forgotten. Home is from Dark Horse. It was Comicsology Originals, and uh, it's Dark Horse. It's got oh God, Twelve Devils Dancing. It's a it's a horror book. I see. I but I wrote these like six years ago. It's a horror book. Uh, if you like body horror, if you like serial killer stuff, if you like uh, you know uh, queer characters, Twelve Devils Dancing. There you go. One, you need a cheat sheet of everything you've done just so you Yeah, I used to have one because uh, my cousin would help me at conventions and I used to have a cheat sheet for her that mm -hmm. would have all the um all the log lines for everything. And I need it for myself now because you know, writing seven books a month. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, I should go <laughs> sleep now. All right. <laughs> oh, you do that? Okay. All right, yes, kids. She says sleep, but she's gonna probably work on another script. All right, Erica. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I always appreciate when people come on and share their time. And I know you have very limited time as we can attest. So, Thank you so much. Please give a little of my best. I will. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody watching. Be well. Enjoy. Mask up. Bye. All right, kids. So, yes, the great Erica Schultz, like I said, I appreciate all these it, all these writers that they have limited time. at. I don't think there's a person I talk to, well, me and Lilith talk to there. That they have, you know, there's not one person I think working in the industry right now where they're just like, yeah, I'm working on one book. No, it's always multiple books. It's like, yeah, it's you're either working, you're either working on like a handful of books or you're not working. So, uh, but yes, thank you, Erica. Uh, yes, go check out her website again. She's she's doing stuff at Marvel, at Image, she Dark Horse. Uh, Yes, I will try to share everything, share as much of that as I can. Again, like I said, just today, Daredevil Woman Without Fear, number two, uh, Rat City, number five, and Venomore Venomous. Uh, yes, very good if you haven't ch checked out Black Widow as the in her new symbiote. Uh, yeah, check that out. All right, now that Erica's plugs are out of the way, let's do ours. All right, so. Uh, if you want to send us thoughts on this interview or any of our other, other episodes, or if you're a comic creator, again, I don't care how big or how small you think you are. Again, I love talking to creators. I don't care if you have one book, if you have one creator on book on Kickstarter, if you're doing 20 books in 20 different places, I don't care. Contact me. Let's set up an interview. Capes and lunatics at gmail.com. It's right there on the screen and call the voicemail 614-382. 2737 that's 61438 capes uh, and also you can uh, find uh, all of our episodes we do uh, episodes on the capes lunatics and capes lunatics sidekicks podcasts uh, 
episodes. You can find social media. We have social media for all the many, many shows we do. Uh, merchandise. Uh, Capes Lunatics has new merch. Uh, it's classic merch. There's one of them. There's one of the many shirts. Again, well, the shirt I'm wearing now is the image you see on the screen here. Uh, so, yeah, get your Capes Lunatics merch. And again, the aforementioned Little Hellfire. Uh, always request that you guys send us money through the Cash App link. Make it rain. Capes of Lunatics. And, of course, uh, we have a Patreon where Lilith and I give you uh, an uncensored, original, at least one episode every month. And, again, exclusive just to our patrons. And if you are a patron, you get to – you can request a topic for us to talk about. Anything goes, kids. Send us a topic. All right. So find everything all in one place. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and – Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. Or if you just want to go straight to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Capes and Lunatics. More vicious and brutal than ever. Thank you. Thank you. That's another co host, Justin. All right. All right, everyone. Again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for. Thank you, Erica Schultz, for uh, your valuable time. <laughs> Again, we popped off before we popped on. She said, she said, oh, okay, well, we won't go too long. She said, Again, you heard her sports schedule. And that's the other thing. It, it's like it's not back, like back in the day where you just got to do your creative process. These days, you got social media posts and you got to get with those writers. You got to get cons. Big cons, little cons. And you have to have be like a full time celebrity. All right. But again, yes, thank you to this psi wielding, uh, adamantium claw bearing, uh, Erica Schultz. All right. And again, if you're a creator, contact us, capesalunatics.com. Or no, capesalunatics at gmail.com. <laughs>